right, number six, we're just supposed to simplify this expression. Um, is there anything we can, I mean, when, when we think about pen and nas, we think about parentheses first, and so we look at the parentheses. Is there really anything to do with this parentheses? No. Jethro, you say no? No, there's not. I mean, we use parentheses to say, do this thing first, or, or do something to this set of parentheses. Somewhere. We're not multiplying it by anything, we're not dividing it by anything, we're not raising it to any power. There's nothing we can combine inside, right? So we can just kind of drop the parentheses. Everything we can do inside the parentheses is done. Nothing is being done to the parentheses as a whole, so we can just drop it. It's as good as it can be. Let's just turn it off. An important thing to realize about what we're going to write next is that we're essentially adding what we see next. What happens next is like an addition, subtraction, a level as far as PEMDAS goes. We are going to be here. The mistake that happens a lot is because you see parentheses next to each other, and then you distribute this negative that we're about to distribute, and then somehow you wind up with multiplication. Just got to be careful. Remember that the stuff in this parentheses is being, you know, like we're adding the negative of this parentheses to that parentheses. Be careful. So we'll distribute this negative and we'll get positive 5x. So we just put plus 5x. Negative times negative 8. It's plus 8 negative times negative 4x to the fourth. That's positive 4x to the fourth. And then we look for some like terms. Do we have any like terms? Jethro? 4x uh, to the fourth minus 2x to the fourth. 4x to the fourth minus 2x to the fourth. We have 2x to the fourth. Okay. Any more like terms? 7x and 5x. 7x and 5x are like terms. We have 12x. And the last thing that's left, 8. 8. It, it has no like terms. Like terms with 8 would be just a number. Just a number. How is that? Who, uh, who wins this? Tyler? Yeah. This is yours? Is it yeah. good? We're good? Okay. Yeah, it looks good. all okay that uh, the, the instructions were off? Did I mess anybody up? Did you even notice? Okay. 11. Okay, so let's just start easy. Let's just start by filling in the table. Uh, we'll start with the negative 3. Remember that anytime you're going to replace an x with a number so that you can evaluate it for that value, I always suggest that you write the, you write the parentheses that are really there. Right? When you have x squared, it, it's, I mean, you really have parentheses around the x, so that's a redundant set of parentheses, and so that can get to be uh, just annoying to write that many parentheses. But if we go ahead and replace x, uh, or, I, or I guess maybe write the actual parentheses that are around the x, remove the x, and then put the number in there. We don't make as many mistakes, especially with negatives. And you want to multiply a negative times a negative, or subtract a negative, or raise a negative to a power. Right? There's a lots of mistakes that could happen uh, when you plug in things for x. So once I've just left this as a, a blank set of parentheses, instead of x, I can plug the number in there, the substitution for x, and be pretty sure I'm not going to make very many mistakes. Right? Uh, this second power means multiplying the number by itself. What number is it that we're multiplying by itself? Negative 3 times negative 3. Right? Not negative 3 times 3, negative 3 times negative 3. Right. So F positive 9. We got multiplication here. That'll come before the addition. So we'll multiply these together, and we get minus 12 plus 3. So we get uh, 18? Zero. That cancels out. Or not 18. Uh, zero. Negative 3 plus 7. So yeah, yeah. 9, 12 minus 12, zero. Zero. We can do all the same stuff, but with negative 2 instead of negative 3. Get 
Give ourselves some empty, empty parentheses so the substitution happens just the way it should. We get a positive 4 minus 8 plus 3. So we get negative 4 plus 3, negative 1. With 0, it's almost too easy to even do any work, right? 0 squared is 0. 4 times 0 is 0. Plus 3 is 3. Now the positive 2, we get 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 3. 4 plus 8 plus 3 is 12. So Negative three zero. Negative three comma zero. Negative two negative one. Zero three. Two fifteen. Now I'm cut off the charts here. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. If I want to put a point up there. Three twenty-four. Let's not graph that. That's way off. Here. So, I'm going to maybe overemphasize this next point because I really want you to understand this. This is the point of having you go back to the old school way of graphing and make sure everybody catches this, nobody misses it, okay? Uh, and that would be, the point that I want you to get is what exactly a graph is. Okay? And simply put, a graph is just like this table, or order pairs, or any other way of keeping track of what input gives what output, right? Here we're keeping track that negative three for x gives you zero for y, we keep track of that here as well. Here we're keeping track of negative two in gives you negative one out, we're keeping track of that with this dot in this particular position on the graph as well. And the same with zero gives you three, the same with two gives you 15. We're keeping track of all of that, and that's what a graph is doing, that's what it's for, right? Um, so when we do this next thing, I think this is where we mainly lose focus, we don't quite understand what's going on. The reason why we connect these is because not, we're not playing connect the dots. We are saying, if I were to connect these two points, say with a, a nice slight curve, I'm just saying I want to save myself time. What, what time am I saving by draw, drawing that, Justin? You're just saving yourself time from trying to find every point on that line. Exactly. You're, you don't want to put in x is 1 half, x is 1, x is 1 and a half, x is 0.75, x is 1.25, all of those x values, and then figure out what all of the y values are that go with it. We can use some points to deduce where all the other points would wind up being. Right? If we were to graph all of those points, we would just find, well, this, there's one right here. We'd find another one here and here, here and here and here and here. And if we wanted to graph more, we'd find more in between each of these, just kind of leading to the next one. And we graph, how many points can we graph in between these two points? An infinite number, trillions upon trillions upon trillions of points are possible to graph. And if we did, there'd be so many, they'd be so close together, and they'd be so you know, mushing and me melting together, the space in between them would be so indistinguishable that we'd start to see this shape. When we draw this curve, it's not a line, it's, it's not straight, it's a curve, um, we are just kind of guessing at where all those points are gonna land, what kind of shape is gonna form if we were to plot all those points. Same here, I'm guessing, I'm just gonna guess that there's gonna be some points down here. I might be wrong about that. This may be the lowest point, okay? As far as how to figure that out, so that comes later. But my guess is that it comes down here. It's a fine guess, it, it's a fair guess. And then I think that I see more points like this. Now, could I guess that it goes like that? Would that be my guess? 
pop one up once and find out. Exactly. It's exactly what I wanted to do. If, if I think that's it, and you think that it's not, and you want to prove me wrong and say, no, that's not going to be down there, it's just going to keep going up. And you need to plot more points. I'll save you the trouble. I do know that this graph will keep going up. But I mean, we, we talked about it. I think Justin mentioned how this number, like if you plug in 5, or you plug in 10, or you plug in 20, or 100, or 1,000, this squaring that number makes it such a big number uh, that whatever this number does, like however big this number gets, pretty much close to the value for y you're going to get, right? It's going to be a little more because you're going to add some more on with 4x and, and 3. Okay? But if you put in 1,000, 1,000 squared is a million, so that part's a million. Then we're going to add 4,000. 4,000 is a lot, but compared to a million, it's not very much. So now we're up to 1,004,003. Okay, so not a big deal to add 3 when we have these large numbers in here for x. But again, it just keeps getting bigger. You know what? If we go negative, though, we're also going to get very big values because what happens when you square a negative number? You get positive numbers. Okay? This is a, I want to be able to talk with you all throughout calculus about what happens when we put this into the function. If we, we put this kind of number into the function, what are we going to get out for y? We talk about it all the time. So I want you to think about these as input-output machines, which is exactly what they are. You just put in something, you get something out. If I put in a negative a million, it's uh, going to be still, or sorry, negative a thousand, it's still going to be a million when I square it. Okay. Now I'm going to subtract 4,000, because it's 4 times negative 1,000, but that's not going to make all that much difference. It's still going to be very large. And then I'm going to add 3 to that. It's going to bring it back up just a smidge. Okay? But I'm still going to keep getting big, big positive numbers. And that's what we see as we put in negative numbers into this function. We square that, that number. We're going to get this big positive value, and the y values are just going to keep being more and more positive as we go to the left. <coughs> okay, so, Gabe, is that helpful? Is that helpful? Okay. Um, I'll also do 12. idea. We're just going to plug things in for x, figure out what comes out for y, plot those points, and then guess where all the other points are going, or otherwise known as draw the curve, draw the shape. Connect the dots. Negative 3 cubed plus 2 times negative 3 squared minus 5 times negative 3 minus 6. So negative 3 to the third, that's going to be negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. What's that going to come out to be? Negative 27. Okay. Then we have uh, 3 squared, so we'll have 2 times negative 3 times negative 3. This will be 9 times 2, that will give us 18. All right, and we'll have plus 15 minus 6. All right, so here we have uh, 3, 6, 9, 6, 0. One more, and then I'll just get the outputs from you. Negative 2 to the third plus 2 times negative 2 squared minus 5 times negative 2 minus 6. Okay, we know this is going to be 2 times 2 times 2. It's going to be, well, it's going to be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That'll come out negative, right? So we have negative whatever 2 times 2 times 2 is. Negative 8. Here's positive 4 times 2, also 8. I'm just going to show that those cancel out. 10 minus 6, so we're 4. Right, 0 will give us negative 6. What's 2 give us? Negative 4, 3. 24. We all agree or not agree? I got 2 for 2. 2 for 2? Well, I've got the answers right back here. Uh, which one is this? This one? Uh, that's, I got zero. You got zero? I got zero. Or down there. You got zero when you put in three? 
Uh, two. Which one are we looking at? Oh, two, zero. Okay, two is zero. Maybe we need to look at that. Excuse my thumb there. Let's see, we have five. Two cubed plus two times two squared minus five times two minus six. Eight. Two cubed. Around like that. Okay, two cubed. Still works out, still positive eight. Plus two eight. squared is four times two, and another eight. Minus 10, minus 6, 16, negative 16. So 2 is 0 and 3 is 24. All right, there we go. Negative 3, 0. Negative 2, 4. Uh, 0, negative 6. Uh, six. 2, 0. And 3, off the charts. 24. It's quite a big growth between 2 and 3. Okay, so let's think about the points that we have and what's going, where we think the points are going to land if we were to plot them between those two points. Okay, between these two points, where do you think most of the points will land? Jesse? It'll go up and then straight down. It'll go, like all the points will connect this point to that point, right? We're going to get, if we were to plot all these points, something like that. Let me show you another scenario. Let me just undo all of those points. All of these points could maybe go like this. Maybe they go up a little steeper, go a little higher than that point, and come back down. Is there any reason why that might not happen? Well, we don't know enough about all those points. That guess is reasonable, right? So, I don't know. You just kind of got to... Make a guess yourself. Could go up and back down. All those points make that kind of a shape, maybe. Okay, and let's go to our next point as we go from left to right. That one right there. It's got to come down here. All these points need to come this way. I knew. I can see that I'm going to be coming back up here, so I'm going to start to kind of curve up as I get to this point. All these other points are going to connect here, and then uh, I don't know what happens next. So just go like that. Oh, you know what 3 is 24? So you know you at least have to go really, really steeply. Before you even get to 3, you've got to make the 24. Well, I think once it gets to 24, it's probably not coming back. Like that gives me that feeling. Right. Which makes sense, because if I put in numbers that are bigger than 3, like 4 or 5 or 10 or 100, well, think about this, this guy here. It's cubed. Cube 100, what's 100 cubed? 100 times 100 times 100. Big enough. 1 million? 1 million. Mm -hmm. right? It's around a million. Uh, plus more, minus a tiny bit, right? Five, 500, that would be. Right? A million minus 500. Minus We've already added on the 2x squared. So, minus 6. It just keeps, yeah, minus 6 is like pitiful. The 6 is just, should just go home. Yeah? Could you go back to the answer for a minute? Like just, just the first page? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna come back to this. I'm gonna give you five seconds. So not number twelve doesn't look the way that you have it drawn. What's that? You got you have number twelve drawn as number eleven when you just did that problem. Oh, that's what you're saying. So I should have this. So that means that I did the, all of our grading wrong. My apologies. Catastrophic. <laughs> so if uh, if your if your problems are marked wrong there, remember. That's my, definitely my mistake, obviously, but uh, I'm checking your homework to see that you've got students at home working hard, doing their best to attempt every problem. That's what I want to see. If you, if you graphed it wrong and you learned that in class and you, it's incorrect on your homework, I don't really care. That's not what I'm basing the credit on. Whether or not you do it correctly is something I'm trying to assess in the review that we take after the homework questions. So, okay. so don't worry too much. Thanks for pointing that out. I don't know how I mixed those up. I, I guess I thought it went that way, but it didn't. Very good. All right, so we are now saying that the graph must keep, just keep going up and up and up and up. And on this side, what do you think? Will it come back this way? No. Why, do, why do you think that? We gotta have some reason for thinking that. Justin? Because it's already starting to go down, and the other side goes up and up and up and up. Okay. 
Okay, there are graphs that look like this, like I've drawn. I mean, what, what makes this function uh, give you points such that the points would just keep getting further and further negative? The fact that if you cube a negative, it always comes out this way. There we go. We're in the negative x's, and we're talking about this cube. We realize how powerful the cube is, how much more powerful the cube is than the square, and the first power, and the number six, right? So you cube that negative number, cube a negative 100, you're at negative a million. If we add, I don't know, a pretty big number, but not even close to negative a million. We subtract even more, we subtract even more. It's just keeping going on negative more and more and more. So I could believe it. If I weren't at that level of analysis and I didn't think about what would happen if I plugged a large number in, I could just plug in negative four, negative five, and see what it's doing and then I kind of feel comfortable with, like, yeah, it is going to keep going down. That's what I feel like it's going to do. The key, though, is if you want to know more about a graph, you, don't, you feel like you don't know enough, if you want to learn more about the graph, then what do you need to do? Plot. Plot some points. Whether you plot, you actually put in a number and find out what the output is, or you kind of think abstractly, and I, I, I'm not thinking about so much a specific number, but just a very large number that I plug in. Very, what would happen if I put a very small number in there for x? And you can just kind of think of it abstractly that way as well. Okay. Right, so that's 12. So we, at this point, that's how we're approaching graphing. Okay. We'll get into more specifics of this kind of graph, and, and, and these kinds of functions go with these kinds of graphs. These kinds of functions, equations, will give us this kind of graph. And these kinds of equations will give us this kind of graph. So we'll get into that more later. But right now, if you just move on and just like, oh, this is how I graph this, and I don't really get that it's the input and output gives me the points, it's, it's a real struggle. I watch people struggle with it. And I know that the problem is they don't quite understand. They don't make themselves think about when I put this in and what comes out. It's so simple. So we might as well start now uh, and think that way. Any other questions from homework? It's 6, 11, 12. Anything else? So we're homework in our pink slips. If you don't have your homework again, just a reminder, you need a pink slip. Uh, as you're doing that, you know what happens next. So we need to get ready for that review by getting a single piece of paper out and a pen or a pencil, calculator. Okay. Uh, all right, so Doug, uh, Doug's team scored 57 points. Doug scored P points. We're going to write an expression for the percent of the total points Doug scored. Let's say Doug scored 12 points. How do you figure out what the percentage is? And we take the part divided by the whole. Right, so we should see this expression should be what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's that? P divided by 57. So now whatever P is, however many points I find out that I've made, I can plug it in for P and it tells me the percent. I use something similar to this to find your uh, percent scores, right, for for your tests and quizzes. Uh, Justin, could you put D percent equals that? You could. Okay. Uh, this is fun. This is the main thing I'm looking for. When I, when you start putting equal and you put D percent, okay, that that could fit. Uh, we don't really need percent because um, what this actually really equals. If you want to get technical, is it is a decimal that's less than one? They would multiply by hundred, and so if you have a hundred out here too, that's fine too. I mean, if you want to be technical, yes. Um, but p over fifty-seven, that's really what I'm looking for. We know that that's how we do it, um, and then to move the decimal over is pretty pretty standard. But yeah, but if it equals like some other weird looking thing like d q p r, I don't know what does that mean. That doesn't it seems like you don't quite understand. This is the main part, or this, or it could be this equal to D or D percent or something like that. Okay. Um, as I go through your tests and quizzes, I just mark how many you got out of five on each question, right? So off to the side, I got three out of five, four out of five, uh, five out of five, whatever. Um, and then when I'm tallying it all up, I use my calculator to 
to, uh, to calculate these quickly. Right? So I, tell, I give the calculator an expression, so then it'll tell me the output will be, one, how many you got right, and then in another column, how, what percentage you have. So if I count up the, one you got, the number that you got wrong, and say it's a 80 point test, okay? So let's say the test is 80 points. Right in there, points. Okay. And I count up the number you got wrong, you got X wrong. Because right. everybody's is out of eight or eighty, but not everybody's gonna get the exact same amount wrong, right? So what do I do to figure out, first of all, how many you've got right? How many points you have out of eighty? Subtract the number of wrong you had from eighty. Yeah, so take eighty. Minus x, so that is what the first column gives me as its output, is 80 minus x. And I just enter, you got this many wrong, I hit enter, and it tells me whatever 80 minus x is. It just makes it fast. Then in another column, I want to have it tell me what's the percent. How do I have it do that? X is wrong. I want to take the number right out of 80, right? So you take whatever variable you put on the other side as the answer. Okay, so this is like Y. And you would take Y over 80 uh -huh. and then 100. And multiply by 100. Yeah. And that's essentially what I do. Really, what I have the other expression is 80 minus X, you know, in parentheses, divided by 80, and then I multiply it by 100. So then that'll tell me the percentage in the other column. Does that real quick, and I don't have to calculate it and punch it in a bunch of different times. And I do the subtraction in my head, and then do the division, and then multiply by 100. It just does it automatically. That's the great thing about functions, about expressions. So, just a little tidbit from my life. It's like. All right, so we're going to simplify this expression here. We're going to distribute the 5 to start with 5x minus 35. Keep in mind that. This stuff here is added to this stuff here. So we distribute this negative three x. We're just going to continue on and you know add, subtract that stuff, not multiply it. Negative three x times x squared. Negative three x cubed. Yes, yes, sir. Negative three x cubed. Right? Negative three x times positive two x. Negative six x squared. Negative six x times x is x squared, and negative 3 times negative 5, plus 15x. It's probably the x that gets forgotten the most often. Don't forget that x. You think for common like terms, you got uh, negative 3x cubed, that's the only x cubed there is. So you got, uh, well, squared there, minus 6x squared. Got a uh, 15x and a 5x, so 20x all together. Got the constant of negative 35. Questions? Ready to move on? Okay. Just another order of operations. We need a little bit more practice. Remember to parentheses where all the x's are so that you make the substitution exactly as it's supposed to be done. So we get negative 3 in here, negative 3 in here. Okay, negative 3 squared, that's 9. That's negative 3 times negative 3, so that's positive 9. Got negative 4 times negative 3, right, so we'll multiply these together first. Plus 12. That's 12 plus 12 divided by 6 times 3. Or should I just do 6 times 3 and get the 18? Why not? Because you have to go from left to right. Left to right. When we try to figure out what to do, and we see a division and multiplication, and we're trying to figure out which one to do first, just start on the left and work to the right. Division comes before multiplication on the left. Do that first. So we, do, we will do the 12 divided by the 6 and get 2. And we won't add the 9 and the 2 because 2 is multiplied by 3. So 2 should be multiplied by 3 before we add 9 to that. 9 plus 6. So <clears throat> right. Whenever 
move forward too quickly, just tell me to go back. Let's substitute negative 1 in there for x. We'll do a parentheses. It's a very helpful thing to do. Make sure we don't get any negative mistakes. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 3 times negative 1 will give us plus 3. Plus 1, that's 5. 0, so easy. 0, 0, plus 1. One. Uh, 1 squared. I could put parentheses around that, but <coughs> there's nothing that I'm really trying to make sure I do in the right order. Right? Just 1 squared. Whether I put parentheses around it or not. 1 squared, um, where am I at? Minus 3 times 1 plus 1. So it's 1 minus 3 plus 1. Uh, so minus 3 is negative 1. 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 1, 4 minus 6 plus 1. So negative 2 plus 1, negative 1 again. We've got 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 1. So we have 9 minus 9 plus 1. Uh, 1. Okay. 1. Uh, 1. Negative 1. All we need to do is take these inputs and outputs that are represented in the table and represent them in the graph. Did I get any of those wrong? Does anybody disagree with those? Okay. I made mistakes before. Uh, so here's an input-output pair. We'll represent that with a dot on the graph. Negative 1, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, 0, 1. Input 0, get out 1. Make sure you're careful not to mix up the x and y, okay? Um, 1, negative 1. 2, negative 1. Uh, and 3, 1. Can I see uh, some kind of symmetrical about this? Between here and there, we're definitely feeling like some the points will land somewhere in there. These points are going to land somewhere in there. All these points, probably we're going to drop a little bit below those two and then just you know come back up for the next one. All those points are going to connect there. Uh, if I wasn't sure that it keeps going up, because the bigger number I plug in for x, the bigger the number is that I'll get out for y, because uh, we're squaring that number. And the same thing goes for negatives, because negative squared is positive. If I wasn't sure about that, I could plot another point out here. I could just plug in 10, right? See if that gets to be a really big number or if it has eventually come down. Same thing over here, just plug in negative 10, see what's going on. If it gets a really big number, you can be pretty sure that you should just draw the arrows going up the heavens because that's where they're headed. All right, that's four problems, that's 20 points. Score it, pass it back. When you've seen enough of your own work, then pass it in. 